exciting world of video game entertainment. Over the next 15 minutes, I'll be your guide on this magnificent journey into the world of video game entertainment. So sit back, hold on to your seats, and prepare to be amazed by the technological and groundbreaking advances in computer sciences and video game entertainment. You might be asking, just what is video game entertainment? Well, to take a look, we have to travel a few decades into the past, to 1947, when the first video game system was patented by Thomas T. Goldsmith, Jr. and Estelle Ray Mann. These men called their machine the cathode ray tube amusement device, and it was a funny sort of contraption that looked more like a radar display than the video game consoles that are so popular today. An overlay was attached to the screen and players used an analog device to control a vector-drawn dot to fire at the targets. You see, video games are a form of interactive entertainment where players control objects on the screen in a competitive manner. Other various gimmicky systems sprung up over the years, many making minor improvements on how the system controls functioned. Eventually, video games seeped into a wider market, which allowed for the concept of an arcade cabinet. The 1971 game Computer Space was the first of the designs created by Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney. It used a black and white screen and dedicated computer system to display and run the game, wherein players would fight against a pair of flying saucers to V for a higher score than the alien opponents. Soon after the moderate success of Computer Space, in 1972, Magnavox released the first ever home video game system, The Odyssey. It was a simple battery-operated system that came with overlays for the television set and various jumpered cards that would be inserted into the system to produce the desired on-screen effects. Then came Pong, a video game ping-pong simulator made by a company named Atari. With both home and arcade versions, Pong was a game with broad appeal that brought video games to a much larger audience. I guess you could say it served them well. Pong, however, gained too much popularity. Some of Atari's competitors began making clones of Pong, games similar enough that some people would buy them instead of the original. This led to a major crash in the video game market in the year 1977. But little-known company Taito helped bring the market back with an arcade cabinet called Space Invaders. Arcade popularity grew in all the places people tended to aggregate. Home consoles like the Atari VCS took off like gangbusters. And then a market oversaturation and quality control lapse led to another video game crash in 1983. This time, things looked bleak for the hobby. Until... A company that had found some success in arcade games began to produce a cartridge-based family computer system that would soon revitalize the video game market. Nintendo had some success in playing cards and laser clay shooting ranges, but its next venture would mark the small company in the history books. The Nintendo Entertainment System, known as the Famicom in Japan, was released in 1985 with 18 launch titles. A simple design, ergonomic and durable controllers with intuitive directional pads, and Nintendo's seal of quality on games set the entertainment system apart from the crowded pack of Atari clones. Nintendo's new console was billed as an entertainment system specifically to differentiate from its peers. From the Power Glove, an accessory that gave the user three-dimensional control over games, to the Power Pad, a peripheral that put the user's hands and feet into the action. Nintendo had something to offer every type of gamer. The company restored consumer confidence with its bold but humble offering, with a little help from a well-known zoophobic plumber. But the 8-bit microprocessor machine couldn't remain on top forever. 16-bit systems were on the way. The TurboGrafx-16 was released by NEC in 1987, and the Sega Genesis followed in 1988. These systems took some time to garner favor with the public, despite their more impressive graphical and musical capabilities. Nintendo pushed out the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in 1991, and the biggest of the console wars had begun. 
Sega's marketing built its Genesis system as the more grown-up, more hip console to own. The cool kids wanted the sleek black console that offered more mature themes, such as the notable difference between versions of Mortal Kombat on each system. Nintendo moderated its game content more closely than Sega, providing for a more family-friendly charm to its console. The rivalry would go back and forth over the years, with studies showing that Genesis maintained a slight edge over the Super Nintendo in the American market. One of Sega's pioneering moves with the Genesis console was the Sega Channel, unveiled in 1994. The service was run through local cable companies in partnership with Sega and initially allowed subscribers unlimited access to 50 games, selectable through an on-screen menu, with new games appearing every month. Later, the number of games would be lowered to 35 games on a two-week rotation. The service transmitted menu and game data in broadcast signals over regular cable lines into random access memory stored within an adapter that plugged like a game pack into the Genesis cartridge slot. Reflections of the Sega channel can be seen mirrored in the downloadable game marketplaces utilized on popular consoles today. Sega Genesis console was the bearer of many other quirky add-ons, such as the Sega CD, which allowed players to utilize CD-ROM-based Sega games, and the 32-bit adapter, which increased the graphical capabilities of the system. These improvements were not enough to push the market into the 32-bit space, though. More advanced and powerful consoles were on the way. All along, Nintendo had been working with a company called Sony to develop a compact disc add-on for its Super Nintendo Entertainment System. After much trial and tribulation, however, Nintendo abandoned their work with Sony altogether and decided to instead work with a company named Philips. Sony used what they had learned working on the device to launch a next-generation console called PlayStation. PlayStation launched in 1995 in America and ushered in a new era of video gaming. Simple, practical, compact disc-based games were the new normal. Save data was stored on easy-to-use memory cards, not on the games themselves. The controller was a modern take on classic designs, sporting a directional pad, analog sticks, and a variety of buttons and form factor that took no effort to master. Nintendo countered in 1996 with a console dubbed the Nintendo 64, which was cartridge-based rather than reliant on compact disc media. The N64, as it was affectionately nicknamed, had a graphical output comparable to its competitors. However, cartridge media had grown increasingly expensive, while compact disc media prices were falling. Despite this slight miscalculation by Nintendo, one particular game from the N64 library pioneered a concept heavily prevalent in the video games of today. Multiplayer first-person shooters. The game was GoldenEye, based on the James Bond film of the same name. The split-screen game mechanic, assortment of guns, ammunition and armor, and the variety of maps made the multiplayer mode a party favorite among friends. Though the Nintendo 64 was loved by some and hated by others, the lasting impact of GoldenEye is long felt. Sega was not out of the market just yet, however. In 1999, the Sega Dreamcast was released in North America to much fanfare. Pre-orders topped 300,000 units. The Dreamcast had a wide variety of games, a unique controller memory card system, and a modem that allowed users to browse the World Wide Web and play video games with friends over the Internet. Support by third-party publishers for the system stumbled, though, and Sega discontinued the Dreamcast less than two years later. It would be Sega's last foray into the console market. The PlayStation would be the undeniable winner of the late 1990s video game console war. While home gaming and arcade units were technologically progressing at a rapid clip, it would be the PlayStation successor, the PlayStation 2, and Microsoft's Xbox that would lead the charge toward the next generation of the interactive hobby that is here to stay. The future of video game entertainment is a field ripe for new innovations and breakthroughs in computer science. And it will certainly be an exciting time to be plugged into this growing market.